Let's learning, increase energy and motivation, and feelings of invincibility. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speaks coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in Rochester, New York, with another fantastic Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Fridays, also known as 18 Fridays. And today's expert, we will not waste any time, is Monica Neubauer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I love the applause right there. <laughs> okay, there you go. It's, it's, it's nice. Sometimes when I feel bad about myself, I just come into the studio and I just hit the applause button again and again. <laughs> and then you can do I the can Rocky see. Jam. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so welcome everybody to the show. We're, we're talking about podcasting today. You were the only person I could think of when it came to that uh, to bring you in and ask you questions and share it with the audience. So why don't you, for those who... May not know you if they're in a cave or have no internet or haven't been out of their house in, in decades. Uh, tell them about who you are, what you do, and uh, how long you've been doing it. All right. My name is Monica Neubauer, and I have been a real estate professional in Franklin, Tennessee for 19, over 19 years. And I do like learning new things and change, so some things came along. So I started speaking in 2008, and then... Since we're talking about podcasting, I was working on some webinar projects with one of my contacts at NAR, and we were looking at webinars, and we almost just said in unison, why aren't we doing a podcast? And so we did. It, we worked it out. We made a proposal. Turned out we it could work. And so then I've been doing this podcast for the Center for Realtor Development with NAR for about four or five years now, and... I love it. I truly love it. You can ask my husband. I walk away from every interview going, dang, that was cool. Man, I love talking <laughs> with these people. It's so interesting. Uh, and then I also have started a passion project for my husband and myself. And that one is about having open conversation and learning to have conversation. And then what are some of the results that can come out of good open conversation? Nice. And that's called an open conversation. Conversation.com. Well, okay, on the right. podcast apps, it's called an open conversation with Mark and Monica. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And, uh, man, it, it's funny, like you said that I never thought about it, but it is when you interview other people, you take away so much from every interview, right? Like, yes. Yeah. It's absolutely. just great energy. I mean, even like talking with you, when you start out your your conversation in the morning, I mean, literally when I text you in particular, but sometimes when I text anybody and I put good morning in it, in my mind, I'm going, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> you know, you just get in my head like that. Yeah, <laughs> and it thank gives you. me energy Thanks. and excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, um, you know, I, I always, I think I was in one of your classes with before I even started speaking, it was the SRES class, I remember. Uh, I think I was taking it to become an SRES instructor. And, you know, I've always looked up to you, and, and, and it's always like when the busiest people get the most done, because I think we've talked about this before, where it's like we always feel like it's not enough. What more can we do? What more can we do? And I think that's definitely something we share in common. So for the, for the agents or influencers or speakers or instructors or school owners or anybody who could be watching, what, what's a good place to, to start? I mean, um, you obviously have the, the, the Center for Real Estate Development locked down. What, what, else, what else can we do? Where can we go? How do we begin? Well, podcasters start their podcast for several reasons. And honestly, beginning a podcast, the money is not there at the beginning. So if you want to do it for the money, you're going to need to have a really targeted audience where you can, you're going to be able to build it up and get the um, ad revenue. So yeah. uh, my first suggestion is to not start a podcast for the money. Okay. <laughs> it may Good help point. bring you money and it may increase your expertise, but that, if that's your motive, I would suggest you reconsider or at least make sure you take some classes so you do it the right way. So setting that aside, why do people do it? A lot of real estate professionals will do it for a couple of reasons, and they need to think about who they're talking to. Because my friend in Chicago, Aaron Maslianski, he started a podcast. He came and heard me at NAR, and he started a local podcast in his area uh, north of Chicago, in, and he calls it, I think, Skevenston. Anyway, so he was doing interviewing local people in his area, and that was 
improving his visibility in his area, which helped him grow his business in his area just by being connected in the community. And I honestly, I think that's probably one of the best ways if a real estate agent wants to do a podcast to improve their business locally, that's probably one of the best ways because you come across as the expert and it's an endless source of content. Um, but again, it depends because when I do it for the Center for Realtor Development, my audience is realtors, period. Yeah. The, so I, know, I think maybe in, but, step one, identify your audience. Step two, yes. kind of niche it down. I like what you said, Chicago. Uh, so many yeah. people from Chicago like to say, all of Chicago. And it's like, that's not true. You don't, no. you don't, you can't just like New York city, just like any of these big cities, there's all these different little towns that sub, you know, right. make, make it up. And it's Skivington or whatever you, you said there yeah. where it's like, he knows more about that little slice, that little slice of heaven within this bigger slice. And yep. now that really, he's not making money. And, and I, I like what you said there too. Like, you're not going to make money off the podcast. Let's, let's just plan on not making money off the podcast, but use it as like a top of mind awareness, branding, yep. you're building your expertise. And then that in turn, then they go, man, Monica, Franklin, Tennessee. She's the only person I'm going to call because she has that expertise in that area. Well, and it also gives you credibility as a journalist, really, because now mm -hmm. you become a source of news for the community. And that's true whether you're doing a blog or a podcast. When you are a reporter on what's going on in the community, you become someone people want to connect with because you now have influence regarding that area. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, and, and I know some people that, that they even get on the distribution list, right? They go to the local town and say, hey, if you have a press release of something coming out, yeah. send it to us. And then you can do an interview, do a story, do, you know, be in the know and educating the community about everything that's going on. Then you, yeah. And they'll find you. To to yeah. When I, when I was focusing on my real estate blog, I would get people who would find the blog and contact me about wanting to write something up about their event or whatever. So once you get going, they will find you. And like you said, they'll want to connect with you to help get themselves so, known. Tell me about the blog because I hate writing. I'm going to be quite honest. I, if I was a better writer, I'd have a PhD. I would have stayed in school longer. <laughs> like, well, that's okay. If I had a better essay. singing voice, I'd be a famous singer. You know, yeah. we all kind of <laughs> make our tour. Our so, so like, is there hacks? Is there programs? Is there apps? Is there something that I can do uh, if I record an, an audio podcast? And then maybe that'll be the next thing we'll talk about video versus audio. And then what you do after the fact to, to blog it out. How does that work? How do you do that? Well, you hear a lot about this out in the marketplace. And to kind of break it down is when you create one piece of content, whether it's a podcast or a video or a written blog, you can, without too much effort, I mean, everything does require some effort, obviously, move that into another platform. So once you do a podcast episode, and you can hire people to do this, I hire uh, a editor who does the sound. And on one of the podcasts I do, we have a show notes editor. Well, actually I have people doing show notes for me on both of them. And we, and you can have them do pure transcript. You can have the show notes be bullet point, and then you can take those show notes and turn them into a blog. So if you're like Jamie and you don't like writing that transcript can go right into blog form, which then puts all your Google keywords on the written page, which are a little better to read than the listening and podcasting and blogging will be definitely separate like that. Well, now because of, we have all these great tools and zoom so we can do videos. Well, now we also, sorry, I'm kind of going into the next one, but then yeah. you can also do that with a video and yeah. take the sound yeah. off and create a podcast and create a blog. So they all do take work, but creating one piece of content, you can use it so many ways. So let's uh, give them a tool. Cause I, I use, I yes. you know many people use Zoom uh, to record their podcast because depending on, on your, your account, of course, but the higher level accounts, you have a separate files, right? You have a video file, you have an audio file, and then you can even have a transcript, which would okay, be let's, key, right? Wait, Go let's ahead. break that down for a minute because when you're recording a podcast on Zoom, yeah, right, if your goal is podcast, the best way to do it is to download it to your computer because that way you get the separate tracks. And 
if you're like me, I talk a little loud, I laugh a little loud. So I really need my editor to be able to moderate the sound and he needs yeah. two separate tracks to do that. Well, and, and I think that's in your settings too in Zoom, whether you, if you haven't been in the settings, you can have separate audio tracks for each person. If somebody like, you know, has those peaks and where it, it, it making sure they have a good microphone and all that is important as well. But right. yeah. Um, I, I don't think you can do that on online unless they've added it. When I first started, you could not record separate tracks if you saved it to the cloud. Do you know if they oh, changed that? Oh, that could be the, um, maybe that's the difference. But it's definitely a setting within Zoom. And I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll put the Zoom settings, my recommended Zoom settings in the comments. And then Monica also has a, a great checklist for you guys before the end of today's broadcast. But that I just want to reiterate that that's really important. Check your settings because the Zoom download doesn't have as many ways to save it. So it limits your reusability, but it does have the separate tracks. And the online may have, sep you know, they may have added the separate tracks. But when you save it to the cloud, again, according to what level you have, they do have many yeah. more ways to record it. So it's a thing. So what about, hey, we got Lisa's watching. Um, Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, 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 Nebraska. Uh, so Jeffrey Scott Sand says he uses Descript and Overdub. Um, I'm guessing that's for the audio, for the for the uh, the podcast. But let's let's distinguish because a lot of people do podcasts and really it's a video blog, video like what we're doing now, and they call it a podcast. They don't do anything with the audio. Maybe they plan to, but they never do. What if, if you know you're going to use it for the audio later? What are some things you have to be aware of when recording it that you can't ever do over? I guess. Okay, let me break it down a little bit yeah. because in my Center for Realtor Development podcast, that's only a podcast. We don't do the video, we don't share the video. We do record it because we're recording it on Zoom. So we have the recording. And I use Zoom because it's just so easy and it's easy for my non-techie clients. Right. For your guests. Yeah, that's important. Right, for my guests to come on easily. Um, so all I care about is the audio, which is why I mentioned I download it to my computer. Now, in the other one that I'm doing with my husband, we yeah. want to have the video with that one. So my editor has taught me how to record it because we are saving it online because we need the better video that way. And because we're using a mixer, are we going down rabbit trails here? You see that there's some education. Yeah. So he and I, because we need to both use mics, we have a mixer. So we have two mics and it goes into one track in Zoom. And so he's taught us how to work with our mixer. But when we do that, I have to edit the video because when we're done, inevitably, there's a little, you know, you got something you want to edit out. And so in the video, we just, I just cut out the part. There's a lot of things I don't worry about on video, though, because when you see it, it's in context and it's funny or whatever, and you can leave it in the video. But in the audio, you have to Does be a bit sense? more technical when there's weird yeah. sounds. And so I hire the professionals to do all the audio editing for me. But the video, I just slap it up there as is and just cut out a piece that might be awkward. I don't over I don't overanalyze the video because people have a higher tolerance level for, okay, I'm going to say Nonsense. this phrase, no mediocre quality video. Okay. You know, if yeah, the yeah. video is not yeah. vid perfect, people will still go with it. They like it, but they don't like mediocre sound and they don't like mediocre photos. So when you're on Instagram and just using photos or you're doing podcasting, you need to make sure your quality is really tight. But when you're doing a video, people tend to have a little more grace because there's lots going on and they just like the video. And we're used to that. People just throwing it out there. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I noticed, Jeffrey Scott Satin and I are working on one. It's called the Indubitably Podcast or, or Much to Say About Nothing. Cool. Uh, is as we, and we had to get used to this, you're on video and there's a, Right. There's body language that you then have to describe like, OK, Monica's hair is super curly right now. You guys can't see it. But and then, well, and right. then whatever, it's whatever, whatever we're going to talk about so that the people who are listening to it can also, you know, hear it described. Uh, verbally. Oh, right. You have to keep right. that in mind that you're talking not necessarily to two different audiences, but in two formats. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, Margie had a question. She said, where can we find people to edit for us? And um, J-Man's going to post the links. I have two handouts that are their hidden links on my website. So you need to get the links from him. And I guess he'll put them in the YouTube description later too. You can uh, download those links there. And I have several people who can do that for you. A lot of vendors. One is a checklist and one is a vendor list. Wow, that is helpful. There's one yep. that looks like a checklist, right? And then the yep. second one. Well, and if you're if you're serious about starting to do podcasting, you can join on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you can join the Podcast Movement Facebook page. And it is the one I connect with. There's other conferences and other groups I put on the handout. However, I've been going to Podcast Movement on and off for six or seven years, and it's amazing. It's probably the largest one, and it was so convenient. It was in Nashville last year, so oh, I ran sorry. up there to go down connect the with people. <laughs> yep, just right down the street. Was it Opryland? It was at Opryland, yep. Oh, I love fun. that place. It's one of the, my favorite places I've been. Yeah, it's a great place. So uh, I can't remember where it is this year, but there's a big Facebook page there, and you can join that group and go do some research in there. And the other place I network with for podcasting, and you can maybe find this in meetup groups or, you know, just kind of start Googling it, asking around. We have a Nashville podcasters group and it meets in person sometimes as well as online on a Facebook page. And I like networking with them as well and getting other ideas. And some of these people are, you know, you know, you look at Jeffrey uh, is obviously very, um, purposeful with his things. He's using Descript and Overdub and J-Man's very much into the technology things. And so when someone like me, who's doing it simpler, I sometimes need those more complicated things and I need help with things that aren't working right. And I go hang out with them and they're much more techie with those things. They have suggestions. We talk about marketing it, how to get more followers. It's just great to have that networking with other people when you're involved in something. Yeah. I, I think that's such a great point because that's one, you know, Facebook really in the last few years, they've pushed people to go to groups and there's huge value there. Whatever you're doing, there's a group out there. Yes. And I just posted the group for the podcasters. I'm like, wow, yeah, thank just, you. just scanning it quickly. I'm like, there's a lot of good stuff because there's always somebody better than you that's willing to give back. And, and yeah. that's what, that's what I love. You. And if you have a problem and, and I, when I just discovered Ecamm in the beginning, there was an Ecamm live community. I'm like, yo, I had an echo today and this didn't work and it was awful. And somebody just goes here, change this, do that. You're done. I'm like, thank you. Thank, thank you. So you. Much. Quick yeah. and easy. Uh, um, so on your list, is there equipment on there as well? Or do you want to kind of quickly kind of, yeah, I'll mention equipment. Yeah. The equipment that you need is a good microphone. Now I use the ATR 2100, which is a very reasonably priced microphone that sounds good. And J-Man and I were talking and sometimes even the more expensive ones, sound engineers can tell the difference, but right. the consumer generally can't. And that's one of the things I got to do was test mics at podcast movement. And this one was just so beautiful. It made my voice a little deeper, but when it comes down to it, well, do I really need to spend $350 on a new mic? Hmm. I, you know, I don't know, but you have to get these little things too, these little covers because they help. It's kind of funny when you get into podcasting, your P's and B's get this like, not spitty sound, but kind of a, bleh. they make this pingy sound. And I find when I have my, oh, you've got the pop one too, the pop yeah. filter that goes in what front of it. What do you think it. about, cause now that you said this, this is set in my drawer since I bought the first um, the eight. So you guys know I have the exact microphone that, that Monica's talking about. I think it's the best mic for your money. Uh, just yes. like what she says, comparing the price versus quality. And I've always wondered, so this is like for the, right. The, that's what you're yep. talking about when, when somebody's talking. Uh, yep. so you've used them and do you see a dramatic difference or is it just the, like you said, the engineers, people who are really keyed into sound all day, they can hear the, minute details, but the average listener, not so much. Well, okay. that pop filter that you have right there is good. And I haven't had anybody say, Monica, you really need to work on this. So I haven't added one of those for myself, but these styrofoam foamy things, that's what you need to put on top of your mic. And the other thing that I've observed is my headphones. Sometimes I get a little more pop 
on the headphones than I do on the regular mic. So I don't like the headphones as much. I like the mic. And you have to pay attention to how close it is to your mic. When I teach a class, I like to drop it down. And sometimes I find I'm too quiet that way. So the microphone does need to be. And of course, I love everything red. So mine's red. <laughs> That's why I made your name red. Yeah, thank you for yeah. doing that. <laughs> uh, great, great with the branding. But it's, uh, it's, I love that you said that too, because so this microphone, the, the Shure that I'm using here, it has two automatic features. So you don't have to mess with the settings too much. There's a near one, which I have to be within six inches of the microphone. And since I, I knew I would be on with the podcasting queen, I'm like, I, I got to have the best sounding voice possible. So the near with a dark tone is what I'm, my setting is right now. But if I moved it further away, you wouldn't be able to hear me as well. But I have a far setting. Like you said, if we're doing like a class, I don't want it up in my face like this. Right. The whole time I can keep it almost off camera if I want to. Well, and you want to uh, be able to move too. Right. And that's where the, here, I'll give you guys a side by side. Here's the shore. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to A-Team Friday. Here's the audio, the ATX. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero. Welcome to A-Team Friday. It is a little smoother. Maybe I need to get one of those. I could tell, I could tell that sure is a little bit smoother. A little bit. And I think it's the near feature is better. The near dark feature makes it, gives it that richer tone where the, the, the ATR, and, but guys, we're talking about $150 difference between the two mics yeah. for the money. If you're just getting started, yes, it's, Do it's okay. ATR. It's like 85 bucks. I'm not just mic. getting started. So maybe it's time to, for a new mic. I don't know. I'm kind of... <laughs> you should have a whole <laughs> studio, Monica, you know, any should, should really send you my just studio. an expense account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I also have bought things that I didn't use. Um, one of the things, if you're doing it on the road, like if you're going to go out and interview storekeepers or, uh, leaders in your community, and you're going to go out on the road, I didn't bring it upstairs with me. I do actually have one. There's a task cam recorder, there's zoom recorders, and they, they say in your hand, so you can look at, look up the zoom brand and the task cam brand. And though without digging in deep, you're going to want to find some videos on this to learn about it. But they are two portable recording recorders. They're so easy. You can take them on the road. The bigger ones, you can put your mics right in them. You can use, you know, the mic cords that go into it, like the, the hefty one, or you can just use a simpler mic or even use them without a mic. They both have directional mics on them. So if you're on the road, you're going to want to get some kind of a different podcast recorder because you won't always have your computer set up. Yeah, that's a good point. I think um, I we have them. I, I put my equipment list in the in the comments as well. One of the ones I have on there, it, uh, I think it's sure it's, it's Samson. The new wireless ones they have are really nice. They're they're like really they're like a small square where you can yeah. put it on on your lapel or whatever. But I yeah. saw somebody they actually sell like a little microphone stand for it where you take it and put it on the end of it so you could use it like a Oh yeah. Yeah. Super, super cool. If you're going to be doing that yeah. stuff out. So people are all the time adapting and changing and adding to their phones. And of course our phones are becoming more powerful. Um, so you can use it, just make sure whatever form you're going to use, research it. So you can at least get equipment that's useful. And for that, it doesn't mean you have to be perfect. One of Monica's life goals is done is better than perfect. And Amen. we're always learning. So here I've been doing podcasts for a while, but I am thinking, hmm, maybe a mic upgrade. Maybe I don't need that $385 one, but both of y'all love that sure mic. And that would be good for teaching with that far away feature. <clears throat> and that's really good too. So we just need to always keep learning. And then once you get it started and you put it out there, like my, my personal podcast, I pay less than $100 an episode for editing and they upload it. I pay for the hosting. Mine's hosted at Libsyn, but there's several on that form. You can host it. That's really affordable. And I have um, a lady who works with me and she does the show notes. So I ask, you know, once I get all my work done, it's usually for $150 or $200 an episode. And a lot of people do do it themselves, but that, and I do a lot myself in my business, but this is one area where I drew the line. No, I'm yeah. not doing those things. <clears throat> I'm going to pay for that help. So let's just use that number, 200 an episode weekly. It's a little month, high. 
but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love, let's yeah. give them high estimates, right? So would it be weekly? You do yours monthly? What would, like, if I'm just getting started, what do you, frequency of it? Do you think weekly, bi weekly, monthly? Yes, you would do. I do the Center for Realtor Development is monthly, and a lot don't do monthly. You kind of have to consider, again, who is your audience and what are you talking about? That one is a, less than an hour, but usually close to an hour because it's very um, topic rich and we get into a lot of details on that. And it's meant to be something that lives on for a long time and people can go back to it. The one I do with my husband is sometimes shorter, sometimes longer. And so we kind of figure that out. So you want to figure out how long it is first. And I forgot where I was going because we posted that question and it got me distracted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's funny. So just frequency. Uh, and I, oh, frequency. I, yeah. And, right. and I think um, if once you get into the, the cost like that, I think you could, if it's real estate related, talk to your affiliates, talk to your vendors and, and you could throw them a little 60 second commercial at some point and say, Hey everybody, oh, this, totally. this podcast is sponsored by J man forever, you know, whatever, it, <laughs> whatever. Well, it is. and with the frequency, here's the other thing. So my pod, my personal podcast is going to be every other week and we already have six episodes, eight episodes recorded. And I feel confident we'll get, you know, an additional four to six done pretty quickly. And if you get to a point where you've been posting them for several months and you just need to take a break, then just let your listeners know this is the end of season one and we're going to take a break for a little That's bit perfect. and come back. Yeah. Because one of the things, if when podcasting first came out and people, if people really like it, they want to listen to it every month, right? Or every week, they really like it. But now they're kind of becoming something that people come and go from. Like I may go listen to somebody for a while and I download a bunch of episodes and I got good things. They stopped their season. I'll go listen to something else. I may come back to that. Good People point. are much more picking and choosing now. So we don't need to see it as a commitment for forever. I would say, though, if you're going to commit to do it, really plan to do at least six to 10 episodes. Because if you get at least six to 10 episodes, you've at least got something meaningful that you can use moving forward. It becomes a slot on your website. It's something that you ventured into and you've learned some things. We see too many podcasts just go on and have their trailer and they have one episode and then it just falls apart. So record three or four before you even start it and plan to do six to 10, just so you create some kind of block of content that lives ongoingly that makes it worth you even doing all the planning and creating the artwork and all of that. Excellent. Yeah. Cause sometimes it does take consistency over time for them to to see what your message is and identify with it and say, you know what? I want to follow her, but we, we want to keep it to our time limits. Let's answer this last question. How do I handle my guest mic? Cause I, I think that's a great one. If they're not coming into a studio to like record with you in person, which rarely happens these days. Well, and even you, you in Nashville, you can record a studio. It costs $200 an hour. You know, you can rent a studio. I mean, you could probably find those cheaper outside of Nashville. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody's trying to make it big there. That's why. Although uh, there's lots of them here. So, you know, there's a thing. Um, so how do you handle my, that? Well, what I do for the Center for Realtor Development is I actually send them a mic. I, I know it's not something everybody can do. I never got do. one. I never well, because you already have one. <laughs> is, I can always use an extra one. What the an extra headset. So um, oh, I send a, a headset. It costs less than $30. So I don't, oh, okay. it's not it's a, lo a simple Logitech headset, just so they can have some kind of USB mic that they can plug in. Because I find that the AirPods kind of cut in and out. They're Apple mics. I mean, if it ends up that so I've had, Sometimes people will either buy one themselves or somehow it still doesn't work right. So sometimes we still kind of have to work on it, but I send them um, a decent quality USB microphone for them to use, but not everybody needs one and it's, yeah. you know, far inferior to your equipment. So I wouldn't want to send it to you and insult you, but um, <laughs> that I always ask people, do you have a USB mic? And so many people are doing these kinds of things now. A lot of my guests actually do have a US, a simple USB mic that they got playing with their things. And I do interview people who do some online instructing. So they often do have mics. But if they don't have an, a USB mic, that's that's what I do for that one. And for my husband and I, we actually create that in our home studio and you can see how it looks and sound. It's on YouTube and it's on the podcast app. And we have 
both of us sit in my studio and we put the two mics into a mixer. So that's how I do it with that. And I actually had one, um, when I interviewed Dale Carlton a few years ago, he was actually in town teaching and he came over to the house to go ahead and do the interview with me, but I didn't have the two mic studio at that time. So we literally still sat in different rooms in the house and recorded it still. At that time I was using Skype and Ecamm and recorded it separately because that was my only mechanism to do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, there's a lot of fly by the seat of your pants with this stuff. You know, don't be afraid. It's got to be perfect. You just need to kind of throw it out there and jump in and get started. All right. Well, thank you, Monica. I appreciate your time. I know you got to get out the door and help another great family in the Franklin area make a move, right? Yes. Yes, we're doing that. Yep. Many people still moving. So um, thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank you. there again, the handouts are there. And if you need to get in touch with me, I'm easy to find. Just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> just google me baby all right guys uh let's give monica a round of applause here I love that. and i i just want to say you know thank you for tuning in everybody if you want to be reminded when we go live i posted a link in the it's live.jmanspeaks.com to be reminded of when we go live but just an testament a test a testament to what monica talked about and and, and what she does i was a guest on the Center for Realtor Development, I talked about video, of course, but then they did uh, a blog about it, okay? Then that blog was picked up by Riz Media, which then Riz Media, uh, you know, posted like 10 tips about video from J-Man Seminars, right? So it helped to solidify me in the industry as like a, a subject matter expert. In turn, the next year, uh, I 2021, I was a Riz media uh, newsmaker in the influencer category. I'm sure part, you know, I've been putting on a lot of content all the time, but what got me on the radar may have been that I was on the podcast and, you know, all that positive press, everything you do, everything you can do to get yourself out there, uh, gaining additional exposure for your business, what you do, your expertise, it's worth it. You don't see immediate results, but it's consistency over time really makes a big difference. So I don't see any more questions. And again, thank you for tuning in. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. Make it a great day. Happy Friday. Stay safe out there. I guess we need to do some music. I feel like I didn't get any music today. Let's do... Uh, bop, 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 da, da, bop, bop. You know what's happening. Straight fuego. Let's do this one. Oh! Whoa. That's right, everybody. Friday. We got real estate on lock. We're gonna keep it going like all day long. Don't you know that I can sing a nice song? I like to get these things and get them sold, but you don't know what that you haven't been told. That J Man can flow for your style all day. I love you in a major way. I think you guys should have some fun and you see me again. Peace out. Jeremiah's chicken. J Man's peace.